Oh, that's hopeless. Morning, folks. Welcome aboard. Sorry I'm running a couple of minutes late. I need to barter through this today. Once again, I'm under pressure. So, why it is, you need to excuse the light problems. Um, just the way it is, I'm afraid. So, nice to have you aboard. Let's get started. Coronavirus update. These are the figures for 20, uh, 24th of the 3rd, 2021. Hold on, man, the right bloody page. No, I'm no. <laughs> Here we go. These are tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached their shores. 1,786,561. And that was plus 5,748 new tests. Tested positive. 215,075, and that was plus 692. That's gone up again. In the hospital, there is 321 COVID patients. That's down 20. In the intensive care units, there are 31 COVID patients, and that's up three. Vaccinated, there have been 2,249,600 uh, and that was plus 34,940 vaccinations from Tuesday to Wednesday, of which 249,552 have had both jags. Okay, seems we move a bit, a bit, seems sort this light out a bit here, folks. Um, deaths, I'm sorry to report there's been an additional three deaths. Um, well, I'll have to see all of it. There's been a, an additional three deaths, um, and that brings the hospital total to seven. Um, 1,562. Community and hospital deaths combined um, now stands at 9,897. So we didn't break the 10,000 barrier, thank God. National Records of Scotland gave its weekly update yesterday and it reported that last uh, in the last uh, seven-day period, 66 additional deaths were registered to COVID. OK, let's move on. Further renew, review of the news. Now, today's report is split in two. All right. The first part of the report will be what's going on in Westminster yesterday and then what went on here in Scotland yesterday. OK. So, Wednesday started in the rags on the first minister surviving the Tory vote of no confidence. Half the rags go on first minister queered. The other half go on first minister queered. But who's to blame? The first minister's permanent secretary, Leslie Evans, is squarely in the sights. Okay, now this is us moving on to the Westminster edition of today's show. So everything we're about to talk about the new all happened in Westminster yesterday. Okay, so here we go. Wednesday, Pretty Patel, um, a, a pretty awful Patel, announces a new asylum seeker policy as part of her a overhaul of the immigration system. Um, asylum seekers who arrive here by official means to be offered the right to remain, those uh, who arrive via non-official routes, to be offered no help and to be removed to suite to the European nation to which they first uh, arrived in the continent of Europe. Pretty Awful had only just finished her statement and her announcement when human rights lawyers pointed out to her that her policy breaks international law on the right of the asylum seeker. A UN charter the UK has signed up to. And while we're on breaking international law, eh, Wednesday, um, you know, eh, eh, the Bojo's been advised that his attempt to up the arsenal of nuclear weapons here in Scotland or here in the UK um, would be a breach of Article 6 of a eh, non-proliferation of the UN charter. But I have to point out that the UK, as well as the other, um, the UK as well as other uh, nations um, who have got nuclear weapons, have not signed up to Article Six of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. You need to excuse that noise, folks. Um, that should stop in a minute. Um, uh, the world's nuclear. Uh, um, states are America, Russia, China, India, Pakistan, North Korea, Israel, France and the UK and none of those are signed up to the UN um, a 
Article 6 on non-proliferation uh, of nuclear weapons. OK, Wednesday, Alistair Union Jack is up in Moray. Um, he drosses a territory to welcome three new strategic defence aircrafts to Ossiemouth. Alistair Union Jack uh, gave a speech on how important Scotland is to the UK's defences and a, its important role in NATO. He then goes on to tell us that the broad shoulders of the UK um, are important in the defence of Scotland. Davy says, we the Scots have no enemies, so who is it the UK is defending us from? Oh, that's, a, a, that's correct, Westminster has plenty of bloody enemies, right? Scotland is nothing more than somewhere for Westminster to dump their nuclear waste and to house their nuclear arsenal. Um, and it's been uh, deemed, because it's been deemed too dangerous, to stay in, we uh, stay in England, OK. Wednesday, Red Tory leader down that road, Sir Comrade Starmer, to vote with the Blue Tories to send in a task force to Liverpool City Council to take over the council and the running of the city after some councillors were arrested on suspicion of corruption. The task force to take over from uh, is to take over for three years which would give the Tories power in the city till the next UK general election in 2024. Now, I don't know how the people of Liverpool feel about that. They're not that keen on the bloody Tories, right? But what it does give the Tories time to do is to throw money at Liverpool and try and buy it out before the next bloody election. Wednesday, down that road, Michael Gove announces a new cabinet post to be created to strengthen the union. Um, the post is to... Um, uh, the the post is to foster really a closer relationships with a devolved administrations. The announcement came, a and sorry, the announcement was made after the publication of a the Dunlop report released on Wednesday. Covey also announced a new um, training for civil servants in Whitehall to help a them understand devolved issues. A devolved issues. SNP MP Ronnie Cowan says. More Tory tinkering, and it wasn't helpful. He also said that Lord Dunlop's report was out of date. Um, the report was commissioned in 2017 by Theresa May and was uh, completed in 2019. The world's changed a lot since then. Um, in the report, Lord Dunlop recommends the new cabinet post for a intergovernment, a intergovernment cooperation to give devolved uh, issues greater visibility, whatever that means. Right. The post will be um, the post will deal with constitutional issues. Issues now. Davy says that's going to be some trick. Seeing there's no bloody constitution for there to be issues over, right? Uh, now it's probably going to be um, given to Ruthie Davison because it's been muted that when she goes and takes her seat in the House of Lords that she would be seconded into the cabinet, and it would appear that this new post is exactly where she's going to be seconded to. All right, let's move on. Wednesday, down that road, um, Culture Secretary Oliver A. Dowden, head of the Department for Digital Media, Culture and Sport, announces UK government buildings to fly the Union's A. Jack 365 days a year. Uh, well, what do we say to that, eh? Um, most of the UK government buildings are flying the Jack anyway. Um, and, we, and I mean, uh, England, Scotland, the Wales... This only applies to England, Scotland and Wales because Northern Ireland has its own issues when it comes to flags and they haven't um, agreed a new protocol on flags, all right? Uh, Davy says the, host, the, the, you know, the fascist hostile takeover continues. SNP Mary Black, uh, SNP MP Mary Black said slapping flags on everything won't strengthen the union. And it won't sort out 10 years of Tory austerity and poverty creating policies. OK, Wednesday, Prime Minister's questions rolled around. First up was Red's Tory leader, Sir Comrade Starmer. Starmer went on the defence review and the plans to cut to a troop numbers. A, and he points out it's a broken Tory manifesto pledge. Um, a pledge which they, they made to, uh, to keep... And troop numbers as they are. But as it turns out, as I say, that's not what happened. That's not what's happened. Only a less than what less than a year after winning the election, Bojo's reneging on his a manifesto pro, a, promises. Okay. And apparently Bojo threw a wobbler down that road and had to be reined in by the speaker. 
Right, next up was Ian Black for the SNP. He went on Dross, not standing down as an MP, to stand for Holyrood. Ian said that a Neil Gray, who happens to be my MP, SNP MP for Erdogan Shots, has standing down so that the by-election can take place on the same day and save the taxpayer 175,000 quid. And Ian wants to know if he, uh, Ian wants a Dross to do the same thing. And uh, Ian asked Bojo if Dross Stein as an MP had met a day with greed than anything else. <laughs> That's didn't he? Bojo was saying that uh, the vaccine rule was successful because of greed. So there you have it, folks. Right. Okay. Anyway, Bojo said a uh, Mur Murray Ross because he forgot Douglas Ross's name, even though he's uh, his Tory leader in Scotland and one of his MPs. He uh, was doing a grand job in holding the Scottish government to account, which of course we all know he isn't. And they, you know, it's a absolute, uh, and it was the usual blustering crap for Bojo, you know, get back in your box, Jock, uh, sort out your own house, telling us that the SNP government was corrupt because of what was been going on up here lately, but we knew that was coming, all right? Right, and finally, uh, for this part of the report, which he, um, as I say, dealt with um, Westminster, PM tells liaison committee um, vaccine passports may be needed to allow the English and Welsh people to go to the pub <laughs> and other venues. Top a uh, uh, Tory MP, Steve, Bar uh, Steve Barker, tells Bojo and the liaison committee that that would be um, a ghastly trap uh, for those um, advise not to get the vaccine on medical grounds and those who just don't want it because, after all, it's no compulsory. All right. Uh, also down that road, MPs in England and Wales to vote on extending emergency COVID legislation for six months. OK, so that's the end of the Westminster part of the report. Let's move on to uh, what went on up here yesterday, right? So meanwhile, back home in Scotland and in Holyrood, uh, it's part two of the report. Wednesday... Um, okay, that's right. Um, communal worship to start again immediately after the courts ruled that the the closing of a uh, churches to communal worship breached human rights laws. Um, a, a, you know, uh, breached uh, human rights laws on freedom of religion. The action was brought by twenty five of Scotland's leading clerics of all faiths. Now, there's a Davy says here, says, sorry, folks, but hey, I don't know what these clerics think they were, th were playing at. I mean, what they try to do, kill their flocks. Now, I agree with freedom of uh, religion and freedom uh, to, to worship as you see fit, but to actually go to court to demand that your churches are opened up to large congregations in the middle of a pandemic is bloody madness! You know, have we got priests, ministers, uh, rabbis, um, uh, and... Whatever else out there, trying to kill off their own flocks. Unbelievable. Right, anyway, Wednesday, the Scottish Government eh, offers nurses and NHS staff, excluding doctors, dentists eh, and executives, um, a 4%, a minimum of 4% pre-FP eh, pay rise, right? Gene Freeman, Health Secretary, said all AFC staff, which eh, excludes doctors, as I say, dentists, eh, executives and senior managers, would, see, would receive their peer rise between 4% and 5.4%. The, uh, uh, the agenda for state uh, for change, which is the staff they're talking about, is 154000 and they will get a minimum. The lowest paid will get £1,200 a year extra. They'll get the 5.4%, and the, fa the highest paid in that part of the uh, sector of the NHS, they will receive 800 quid. OK, cracking pay rise, can he whack it? Hey, Disney half put that load, that shower down that road to shame and in the middle of a pandemic offering nurses 1%. Wow. You know, and there's a day he says, I hope they accept the, the offer. Uh, nurses and other, uh, as nurses and other staff in England and Wales would love that sort of uplift to their uh, incomes. But uh, they've only been offered, as I say, 1%. But what this offer will also do, folks, is it will uh, encourage um, nurses and uh, other practitioners, like uh, porters and things like that, for other parts of the UK to come to Scotland to fill, plug the gaps in 
your NHS, which is brilliant. All right. Wednesday, EIS um, a Union announces strike action in the quality sector. Um, the dispute is uh, based on claims college lecturers were being sacked and rehired in the lesser role of a... Um, of instructor assessors, right? So the instructor covers lecturer, assessor covers doing the bloody exams, right? The dispute's been running for a while now. Um, we, we, industrial action called off last week after an agreement was reached with the college with College Scotland. EIS leader Lanny Flanagan states that a uh, College Scotland have reneged on the agreement uh, they made last week, so strike it is. Now, the National Union of Students, a Scotland president, Mark Crilly, said this is a major blow for students after the year they've had with COVID. Right, um, the EIS Union Further a Education um, a Lectures Association has been accused of a taking unnecessary industrial action while meaningful talks are still ongoing. Now, there's a Davy says here, it's time for the high, Higher Education Minister, Richard Lockhead, to step in here and sort this out because the, needs, the kids need to be able to get their education. This is outrageous behaviour. Right, Wednesday, First Minister's questions rolled in again. Right, first up was Baroness Ruthie Tank Commander for her very last um, a outing at First Minister's questions. Ruthie Tank Commander went on education, right? She started out by saying that there have been three major publications in Scotland. Two dealt with the Scottish Government's mishandling of the salmon thing. And a, one, a education. She asked if the first minute, uh, what she was going to do about the attainment gap. The First Minister said Ruthie um, uh, could have asked her about these things at any time, right? Uh, the First Minister then goes on to lay out what they're doing to um, sort out the ed uh, attainment gap. And this is all done to the Audit Scotland report that came out that said the attainment gap has barely shrunk. And of course, with the COVID pandemic, any shrinkage in that has just came to stop because kids in lower, in, uh, lower income families, well, they won't have the, the technology and that to be able to keep up and they wouldn't have had the parents that would have been able to keep home teaching them the way that the, the better half kids would. So the attainment gap's got worse. So, hey, as I say, you know, Ruthie Tank Commander, Go her bahooky slapped as she was tell you know, don't uh, don't give me any of your piss, you're off to the House of Lords, right? Um eh, anyway, as I say, Lucy eh, Ruthie Tank Commander's off down that road to take up the new position in the Cabinet Office, no doubt. Next up was Red Tory um a eh, leader, Poverty Pai Sarwa. He went on the report into the infections at the Southern General or Queen Elizabeth University Hospital, if you like. Right. Um he asked the First Minister to ensure that every family got a copy of the report, and the First Minister said yes, she did ensure that every family got a copy of the report, and she said she'd also set up a full public inquiry into the issues that had arisen at the, the Southern General. Okay, dokie. Right, next up was Wee Willie Who, the Yellow Tories, and he went on, well, who cares, really, he's an irrelevant wee twit. And as you all know, I've got the, I've got Willie Rennie syndrome, so I have absolutely no scooby what it was that Willie had to say for himself. But you know, I'm sure you can look it up yourself, right? And the uh, and last up was Alison Johnson of the Greens. Um, she's the co-convener of the Greens, along with Patrick, Patrick Harvey's the other co-convener. Miss Johnson went on the new child benefit in Scotland, and she wanted it expanded, right? The first minister said the new child parent was a game changer and that Scotland was a... Uh, oh, and the other thing that Alison Johnson wanted was action on climate change. So the First Minister told the new child benefit was a game changer and that Scotland was already a world leader on uh, climate change. So there you have it, folks. That was the um, First Ministers. The only one to get their behooky sent, uh, scalped and sent to the naughty step was a uh, Ruthie Davison. But she'll not be going to the naughty step again because, well, let's face it, she'll not bloody well be there. OK. Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday saw the Scottish Parliament dissolved for the election campaign. So the SNP bad stories, Scotland crap stories, will be demonstrably um, a 
larger than normal. We will get and be pelted at how crap we are at absolutely everything for the next five and a half weeks. And the other thing we'll be subject to is um, a Westminster politicians voicing their opinions on how we, how poor and how stupid Scotland is all over the place. So get ready for a barrage of propaganda people. Okay. Right, uh, finally for Wednesday, former First Minister Alex Salmon gave a statement saying he accepted the findings of both inquiries into the mishandling of complaints against him. Um, he appears to have thrown his conspiracy theory pals under a bus because he's also accepted there the, was no SNP conspiracy against him. Right, but he, he stated that he's going to the courts um, to oust Leslie Evans, the top civil servant here in Scotland, right? But I fear he's, in, he's wasting his time as the SNP NEC have already passed a motion not to extend their contract any further um, when it runs out in April. Will she go? I one way or another she'll go. And we'll say good riddance to her because she's been nothing but a pain in the uh, hooky. I mean, appointing an investigator that had already had contact with the complainants was a bad move. It was not just a bad move, she knew what she was doing. Right, so the SNP didn't conspire against Mr Salmon. Mr Salmon's now accepted that, but it appeared the British bloody state may well have done with Leslie Evans and Judith McKinnon, so that's where Alex's going to fire his bolt next. OK. Right, moving on to this morning and what the papers have to say. Good viewing figures today, folks. The eye goes on, Salmon, see you in court. The sun goes on, new court fight vow, and a, a cop's called in. All right, X revenge is the big headline. Um, the herald goes on, Salmon takes legal action against Scottish government. Now, folks, we have, to de we have to define here between Scottish government and the civil service. Now, the civil service up here is said to be part of Scottish government, but as we all know from what David Davis told us last week in his a parliamentary privilege speech to um, the Westminster Parliament, the civil service has never been devolved to Scotland and is not the Scottish government. It's loosely run from Westminster, which was exactly what Mr. Davis's words were. All right. Um, the Metro goes on. This cannot be allowed to stand. Salmon takes aim at top civil servant Evans and fresh legal action after um, damning report. The Scotsman goes on. Salmon sues over a refusal to sack head of civil service. Doesn't work for the Scottish government, so she can't be sacked by the Scottish government. She works for Whitehall. Right. The Times goes on. Salmon to sue as Evans stays in post. Well, you know, her contract's up next month. Well, she's staying in post. Right. Um, the Looney Rag, the Express goes on. Believe it or not, EU sees sense and jab row. Today we're vaccination rollout and I heard this morning <coughs> that the EU are meeting today to decide whether they're going to um, clamp down on exports of vaccines from the block. The Telegraph goes on. Ban on worship ruled, uh, ruled unlawful. Now the ruling in, Scottish, in the Scottish courts will have implications for England and Wales because they have been curtailing uh, worship down that road and all for public health reasons. Okay, the ruling of the Scottish courts to say that uh, um, the rights of these people to worship uh, uh, over overrides the right to the rest is to be safe. I just thought it was a wee bit crazy. After all, public health is the issue here. The record goes on. I've been a proper Charlie. Football story. Apparently, Charlie McGrew, uh, McGrew um, he attended a boozy, a boozy old firm party breaking lockdown rules. You know, there's a Davy says here, some of these bloody footballers seem to think they're above the bloody law. Jesus Christ. The Scottish uh, Daily Field is on. Bomb alert at Queen's Scots Palace. Well, even that's bad English. It should have been Queen's Scottish Palace, but never mind. Who cares? More Hollywood House off the face of the map for all I care. Right, and the star goes on. Ah, oh, the star. you got to love the star. The star goes on. Pollution makes winkies shrink. 
climax change. <laughs> Apparently, uh, global warming and pollution is making men's members a little bit smaller, and hence, climax change for our lady friends. <laughs> you just got to love the star. You know, the star is brilliant. In all the darkness and doom and gloom, the star is there to shine a wee bit of hilarity and stupidity into the darkness. You can't whack it, folks. All right. Now... As I say, I'm under an awful lot of pressure today, folks. I didn't get out of the depot of weight. Um, because, well, and that's due to the fact that the, the motor wouldn't start. And the, I'm hoping it's going to start now, after my break. Because uh, if it doesn't, this is as far as I'm going today until somebody rescues me. <laughs> uh, anyway, on to the public, uh, public interest notices. Okay. Right. Um, remember, folks, support the independents, bloggers, vloggers, and, and, and programmes, right? Support Broadcasting Scotland, support Independence Live, support Indie Live Radio, support iScot uh, Magazine, support the National Newspaper, and uh, support Independence Vloggers and Vloggers. And if you can chuck, chuck a couple of she shekels their way, then please do. We're going to need these voices more than ever. This next five weeks, I mean it, we're going to have everything, including the kitchen sink thrown at us. And I mean that sincerely. Everything, including the um, kitchen sink thrown at us. Right. Now, on to public health message, folks, because time's getting on. All right. Uh, remember, even though a lot of you uh, got this first injection, it doesn't give you immunity. Be kind to your friends, your family, um, uh, your neighbours and your community by observing facts. Face coverings and enclosed public spaces. Avoid large gatherings. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. Two metres social distancing when you're out and about. And if you need a test, book one. Thank you very much for watching today, folks. I'll be back tomorrow with the review of the week. And no, I'm sure at a few points during that, I'll be going to have my bloody dinger. Because I'll have time to get off my bloody dinger. <laughs> I'll catch you. Hey, Elizabeth. Yeah, hey, good morning, Duisburg. Hey, um, have a nice day. Now, you guys look after each other and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now.